In the Minister of Finance's first budget speech, he suggested that uh, they need to adopt a cautious approach. And that's, I think, exactly what the minister did. And overall, I would say it was the correct approach. He found the right balance between not adding to the fiscal burden on households and businesses, but at the same time ensuring that South Africa's government moves into a better fiscal path in terms of consolidating the budget deficit and trying to get the debt level into better shape. So if we unpack the key elements of this budget, the first key element is that the tax revenue was 182 billion over collection. That's a phenomenal increase, certainly relative to what was expected uh, in the budget last year. And as we know, a lot of that tax collection came through because of the mining tax, but it wasn't just mines. If you look at that revenue, it held up more than budgeted. If you look at the fuel levy, if you look at personal income taxes, all of those categories were ahead of budget. And so the minister's job, you would argue, became a hell of a lot easier because suddenly he's got 182 billion that he didn't think he was going to have a year ago. So what did the minister do with that 182 billion? He had a couple of choices and, and I think he chose the right option. So he could have, for example, said, I've got 182 billion. I'm going to allocate a lot of that money to various government departments and I'm going to go on a spending spree. Now, I think if he had done that, that would have been the wrong choice. The reason is that many government departments are fairly dysfunctional. If you look at the institutional capacity in this country, it's definitely deteriorated over recent years. And so under those circumstances, if you allocate more and more money to each government department, all you're doing is you increasing the inefficiency at which the government spends that money and you're not going to get a favorable outcome. You might think that you're going to get more hospitals and more, more education, but the reality is that those departments are not even utilizing their existing budget all that effectively. So adding more money is not going to solve the problem. The second choice he could have opted for was to take that 180 billion and say, let me give massive tax reductions. Let me reduce company taxes significantly, individual taxes, and let's go on a big um, tax cutting spree and get this economy a lot more buoyant. And there's no doubt that that would have lifted growth for a period of time. The problem with that is that he's got no assurance that tax revenue is going to hold up over the next couple of years, particularly the mining taxes, because at any point, obviously the the commodity price uh, prices can start to moderate and his tax revenue collection would would dissipate. And then he'd find himself coming back next year saying, gee, guys, I'm sorry, I gave you a big tax reduction last year. We got a bit of a stimulus, but now I have to increase the tax rate substantially because I'm short of revenue. And that fluctuation uh, would certainly unsettle businesses, unsettle confidence, and really cause quite a lot of um, upheaval in the economy. Not a good choice. You only really cut tax revenue significantly if you're fairly assured that going forward, your tax revenue is going to be able to hold up. The third choice is the choice he went with, which I think is the right choice. He took a lot of that 180 billion and he said, I'm going to reduce the amount of money government has to borrow. I'm going to bring in the deficit. So the budget deficit is significantly lower. I'm going to reduce the level of debt over a period of time. And therefore, I'm going to put South Africa in a better fiscal position. And the benefit for that is that he's now saying to investors, he's saying to local foreign investors, he's saying to the credit rating agencies, we are we are adamant to do the right thing. We're not simply going to squander these types of windfalls. We, we recognize that South Africa's fiscal position has deteriorated. We recognize that our international uh, credit ratings have moved well below investment grade, and we need to restore faith in government's ability to manage the fiscal position much better. And I think that longer term, that's the best option. So this isn't a growth boosting budget. It's not uh, something that we would look at and say, wow, the equity market's really gonna do well as a consequence of this budget. There isn't a huge amount of stimulus. 
Even the bit that he said he was going to do on infrastructure is nothing new. So you can't look at this budget and say, oh, it's going to drive economic growth. And if you look at the growth trajectory that the minister put forward, it's modest, right? Around 2% growth um, during the course of this year and then slowing to around one and a half, one point six percent over the next couple of years. So by the minister's own forecast, he's saying this isn't a growth stimulus. Instead, it's about fiscal consolidation. And given uh, the choices that the minister had, I think that's exactly the right choice. There are some benefits, obviously, for households and for for the corporate sector. So the second element of what he did in this budget was to say, while I'm applying the extra revenue to bring the government's fiscal position in better shape, let me not add to the tax burden of the economy. Let me not add to the tax burden that individuals and corporates are facing. And so he didn't increase the fuel levy, the road accident fund, and that I can't remember when that last happened, and that's a a clear positive. And the other positive was he said, I'm going to compensate individuals and households for the full effect of fiscal drag or bracket creep. In other words, as inflation uh, is around, you move up into higher tax brackets and you naturally then just pay more tax revenue. Uh, And so you find yourself kind of effectively worse off, even though uh, you haven't really earned significantly more money. It's just the negative effect of inflation. And he's compensating fully for that effect by giving individuals back 13 and a half billion. So he's clearly sent a message that I don't want to add to the burden that households are currently facing. The reduction in corporate tax is going to cause some criticism, right? Given the political environment, it's not going to go down well. And if you listen to the speech, it was very noticeable that nobody applauded that particular announcement when the minister talked about a reduction in corporate taxes. But let's be fair, that was set up by Minister Mbaweni when he was um, the finance minister, and he said that the corporate tax would be reduced. And so there's a consistency in making these announcements and then following through. That's a very good thing. The second element is that it's not as if this reduction in corporate tax is going to give corporates a huge relief. What they're doing is they're broadening out the scope of how corporate taxes are implemented. And so the net effect on corporates is going to end up being very modest. But it sends an important message to the business sector to say, we need the business sector to be positive, confident. We understand the role of private sector in driving this economy. And therefore, we recognize that we've got to provide some relief uh, to the corporate sector. So I thought on those two weeks, two key initiatives he did very well. The other elements, there's nothing really in it to get all that excited about. So if you look at, uh, for example, transfers to state-owned enterprises, there's no real resolution to those issues. He had to give Denal a bit more money because it's in so much financial trouble, but they haven't resolved exactly what they're going to do with state-owned enterprises. Uh, And it's clear that they haven't had those sort of political discussions to make clear decisions. He did allocate more money to the salary adjustment for uh, public sector workers, but he said we're going to have further discussions around public sector wages. And so that element is not fully resolved. He didn't extend uh, any additional social grants beyond the, the 350 rand Uh, distress grant uh, that was announced at the State state of the Nation address. But there's no doubt that that issue hasn't gone away and that government's going to have to revisit uh, this idea of a basic income grant. So there are a number of key issues which I would say remain unresolved and are going to continue to be debated. And you probably would have wanted to see more resolution to those issues in this budget. Uh, But I think from a political point of view, Clearly, they're not in a position to make those types of choices. So overall, I would say this budget is is positive for the bond market. It's positive for foreign investors. It's positive for credit rating agencies. It's kind of neutral for the equity market. I don't think the equity market is going to get too excited by the content in this. But I think more important than all of that, it uh, puts South Africa on a better path in terms of fiscal discipline. 
The last thing I just want to mention is around the credit rating agencies. Because the debt is, is looking much more favorable now, are the credit rating agencies suddenly going to revise South Africa's credit rating significantly higher? And the answer, unfortunately, is no. They tend to be very conservative on increasing uh, your credit rating. They're very quick to reduce your credit rating. But in order to increase your credit rating, it takes time and they have to be convinced that the policy measures you're introducing are actually going to be implemented. Obviously, there's still some risks to this fiscal discipline path. The key risk is that the social grant payments may escalate further and disrupt government's ability to maintain fiscal discipline. There's also the issue around government salaries and potentially government can't adhere to um, a very low salary adjustment. And so the rating agencies would wait to see whether those types of initiatives can be bedded down much more comprehensively. But it is possible that over the next couple of years, if we continue on this path of fiscal consolidation, that we can then expect credit rating upgrades. It also means that I am expecting that the RAND can hold on to current levels. The RAND, I think, has done reasonably well. It's around fair value. And I think that certainly foreign investors listening to this budget will be encouraged by the type of return they can get out of South Africa's bond market, uh, given that the borrowing requirement from government is, is moving lower. So that's all from my side. Hope that makes some sense. We'll chat again soon.